it's quite a catchy title, Lose the Business Plan, but many people say you need the business plan to give you a sense of where you're going. It's your compass. And that'd be right. It, it is a compass if it's used as a compass, but mostly it's used as a basis for getting funding. And here's the problem. With 96% of businesses failing, and let's say half of those being funded by the four Fs, you know, friends, fools, family, and finance institutions, <laughs> uh, and half failing, then obviously this business plan thing is not working. And really what this book talks about is about what, what could be working instead of this thing called the business plan. I love the fools and I love the family. That's where I'd go to find money <laughs> for and, a business. And, 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 the, and the finance, which is, which is proverbially kind of dried up now. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Funding is low. Banks are weary to lend. So what non-banking agencies are available for a budding entrepreneur? I think um, just looking at the, those four Fs, I think um, family um, is probably the biggest financier of entrepreneurs today. and um, But there are other institutions uh, like the National Empowerment Fund, uh, IDC, um, and various other government agencies that are trying to do more non-traditional financing mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs. However, I, I need to be pragmatic here and say that still today I, w I would guess that the majority of entrepreneurs in this country are being financed through through other means. The, the three first Fs. All right, let's talk about other challenges that the entrepreneur faces, and that's the big one. Skills, mm. often the entrepreneur doesn't have experience in the chosen field, mm. or does, and has to hire a very small team of people who don't have the necessary skills. Is that a true reflection of what's going on, and is that why many businesses are challenged? You know, for, for me, I think there are a lot of opportunities to find excuses for for challenges. And for me, what I've found with the successful entrepreneurs is they don't see any of these as challenges. They see them as opportunities. The fact that there might be a skill shortage, they, they might see that as an opportunity to find some skills and then that means it's a barrier to entry for other potential competitors. Um, so the, the other thing that's very important to, to note about successful entrepreneurs is that they don't necessarily have to have these skills. In fact, they shouldn't really have these skills required. They need to be able to muster those skills mm -hmm. and be, <coughs> be able to ensure that those skills are put to work. You talk about, you know, it depends whether you look at the glass half full, half empty, lack of skills, a barrier to entry or an opportunity. But the entrepreneur also has to be pragmatic. Mm. They've just managed to find financing from wherever they've managed to find financing, establish a structure, market a business and get it up and running. Mm. The last thing that I think an entrepreneur needs is the additional burden of uh, using operational funds to, for training and development. But then why are they getting into that business in the first place? The question that I ask is, is surely part of the research is to find out if those skills are, are available or not. If they aren't, then they shouldn't be going into them if they cannot create those skills. So what makes a successful entrepreneur, because you refer to that a few times right now, what differentiates a good idea from a bad one? I think, let's talk about the entrepreneur first of all. You know, the, the question often is asked, is the entrepreneur born or made? You know, and, and to me, there really um, are four things that need to be in place. The first is the, the opportunity needs to be there or the disaster. Many entrepreneurial successes have come through disasters. The second is the, as I spoke before, the ability to muster resources or the belief that I can do that. The third is the ability to tolerate pain, and there's a huge amount of pain in setting up a business. Mm -hmm. And the third is the ability to take risk. Mm -hmm. you know. And very often people might be, be you know, 60 and be the first time that they are entrepreneurial, and when they're in their early 30s, they might have a bond and, and two kids at a private school and, and cannot take the risk. Mm -hmm. Alon, you, you talk about pain uh, just now, and I mean certainly some entrepreneurial startups that I've seen, mm -hmm. and I've just kind of you know watched the progression through time. There certainly is a huge amount of pain that they take, and I mean mm -hmm. the kind of uh, issues that they have to surmount in order just to try and make this business a success is just massive. Do you think that those challenges are unique to South Africa, or do you think it's kind of more an entrepreneurial trend right across uh, right across the globe? And and also just maybe just tell us in South Africa, are there special Type uh, issues that entrepreneurs will have to deal with, rather than um, you know, rather than, than people elsewhere in the world. 
Well, firstly, um, it's an international thing. The pain that entrepreneurs uh, suffer is an international thing. That 96% failure rate is not a South African statistic. Mm -hmm. It's an international statistic. Mm -hmm. And wherever I go around the world, you hear the same refrain. Um, secondly, um, the, um, the, the pain that uh, entrepreneurs go through within South Africa might be a little exacerbated by our current political situation where um, entrepreneurs are required to do um, more than entrepreneurs around the world. And comply uh, with BEE. Comply with BEE. Um, our, our, to set up a business is still quite difficult in terms of the number of steps that need to be taken. Um, but there has been a trend to make that a lot easier. I've just come back from a big conference in France, and you'll see in France, which in, in fact entrepreneurship is a French word, um, and ironically France is, is um, finding it very tough to get entrepreneurs uh, off the mm -hmm. ground because there are huge barriers to entry for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. within France. So relative to a place like France, mm -hmm. we, we really have it good. All right, a final question and very briefly, for anybody reading your book, what's the fundamental lesson that they are going to learn? Why should they read it? They should read it because it basically tells us that uh, the business plan should be designed and then thrown away. You have to believe it in your heart. You have to understand it in your mind. Mm -hmm. If an entrepreneur refers to their business plan, the first thing I do is tear up that business plan and ask them, how do you make money? If they cannot answer that question, how they make money, yeah. then I don't care what that business plan says. Okay.